In this video, we shall show how the Marian dogmas of the Catholic Church are typified in nature. 1 Corinthians 15.41-42 says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For star differs from star in glory. So is it with the resurrection of the dead. So, according to the Apostle, the resurrected and glorified bodies have three classes. The glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, and the glory of the stars, which vary in glory. St. Jerome reads this verse as applying to the glory of the members of the church when he says, The members of the one church are different. Just as the sun has its own brilliance, and the moon also tempers the darkness of the night, and the five other stars called the wandering stars traverse the sky, differing both in their courses and in their brilliance. There are other countless stars that we see shining in the firmament. The brilliance of each of these is different, and yet each and every star is perfect, according to its own standard, to the degree that, in comparison with the greater star, it lacks perfection. Against the Pelagians 1619. St. John Chrysostom also reads this as applying to the distinction of glory of the resurrected bodies, when he says, Paul switches metaphors in order to underlie the fact that although there is only one resurrection, there will be great differences of honor from one body to another. Homilies on the Epistles of Paul to the Corinthians 41.4 The glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, and the glory of the stars points to the distinction between the glory of the saints and our division of Latria worship to Christ, Hyperdulia to Mother Mary, and Dulia to the saints. Now the glory of the sun is the greatest, as it is the brightest light from our perspective. This signifies Christ who is the greatest in heaven, who alone receives Latria. Scripture calls Christ a son in Malachi 4.2, which says, But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise. The glory of the moon is the second brightest light, lesser than the sun, but exceeding all the other stars. This signifies the queen of heaven, the blessed Virgin Mary, who is subordinate to Christ the Son, but far surpasses all the other saints, which are the stars. And this is why she alone receives hyperdulia. Scripture spiritually compares Mary to the moon in Song of Solomon 6.10. Who is this that looks forth like the dawn, fair as the moon? The church fathers interpret this verse as applying to the church. However, spiritually, this is personified most excellently in the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Bernard of Clairvaux applies this verse to Mother Mary in his sermon for the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, when he says, With good reason, then, that divine singer, singing in wonder at her, the Blessed Virgin Mary, said, Who is this who ascends like the rising dawn, beautiful as the moon, matchless as the sun? Now the glory of the stars is the glory of the multitude of saints, who are lesser than Christ the sun and Mary the moon. The glory of the saints vary among each other based on their degree of charity, as scripture says, for star differs from star in glory. So St. Paul clearly teaches three degrees of glory in heaven, Christ the sun, who receives latria worship, Mary the moon, who receives hyperdulia veneration, and the saints who are stars, who receive dulia veneration. St. Thomas Aquinas has a similar interpretation of this verse when he says in his commentary on 1 Corinthians, Furthermore, by the sun can be understood Christ, but for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise, Malachi 4.2. By the moon, the blessed virgin, fair as the moon, Song of Songs 6.10. By the stars mutually situated, the other saints, the stars from their courses, Judges 5.20. Given that scripture tells us that the sun is a natural symbol for Christ and the moon is a natural symbol for Mary, we can actually see the Marian and Christological doctrines are patterned in nature. The sun is a source of life and center of our solar system. Without the sun, there would be no life. This signifies how Christ is a source of natural and supernatural life. He is a source of natural life since he created us. He is a source of supernatural life since he is a cause of grace. This is taught in John 15.5, which says, I am the vine, you the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Thus Christ is the source of natural and supernatural life. Just as the sun is the center of our solar system, Christ is the center of all creation. Colossians 1.16-17 says, All things were created by him and in him, and he is before all, and by him all things consist. All of creation was patterned off of the Incarnation, and Christ is the center of all creation and human history. Now the moon is the second greatest light, reflecting and channeling the light of the sun. This signifies how Mary is the Queen of Heaven, second in glory only after God. This shows that she also reflects and channels the glory of Christ. The moon reflects the pure white light of the sun. This shows that Mary reflects her son's purity from sin, indicating that she is the Immaculate Virgin. 
Scripture says that Mary is fair as a moon, bright as the sun. Her brightness is compared to the sun because she is free from original sin just as her son is free from original sin. Just as the moon channels light to those on earth during the night, Mother Mary channels graces from her son to us on earth. Hence she is the mediatrix of all graces. Saint Bonaventure in Mirror of the Blessed Virgin Mary chapter 7 says, It is said in the Canticle of Canticles, Fair is the moon. This moon therefore is Mary. The full moon is Mary full of grace. Well is Mary compared to the moon, because by the eternal sun she is fully illuminated with the light of wisdom and truth. Therefore the name Mary is well interpreted, illuminatrix or illuminated. For she who is our moon and our lamp was illuminated by the Lord, and she was the illuminatrix of the world, according to that prophetic word, for thou lightest my lamp. In the fullness of this moon, the man came back to his house, when Christ came into the world in the flesh. Now just as the moon revolves around the earth, and the earth revolves around the sun, our blessed mother, who is signified by the moon, revolves around and watches over the children of Adam on earth, as she is our great intercessor. Those of us on earth revolve our worship around Christ, who is signified by the sun. Now the moon's influence, or gravitational pull, directs the waters of the sea, drawing the living water to the shore where men dwell. Water is a natural symbol for God's grace. We see in John 4.14, but the water that I will give him shall become in him a fountain of water, springing up into life everlasting. Thus Mother Mary, the moon, draws forth and erects the ocean of grace, the living water, to men, since she is the mediatrix of all graces. St. Bernard of Clairvaux teaches that Mary the moon directs the water of grace when he says, With good reason, then, that divine singer, singing in wonder at her, the Blessed Virgin Mary, said, Who is this who ascends like the rising dawn, beautiful as the moon? And no wonder, since it is necessary that from above the angels, she, the Blessed Virgin Mary, draw the living water that she pours out for men. Now scientists claim that the moon was originally a part of the earth that was lifted up into the heavens by a heavenly body. This is a natural type for Our Lady's assumption, as she was originally on earth, then after her death, she was lifted up to the heavens by the angels, who are signified by heavenly bodies. Thus from the natural symbolism of Mary as a moon, we come to see that the queenship of Mary, the Immaculate Conception, the Bodily Assumption, and the Doctrine of Mediatrics of All Graces is naturally symbolized in nature. Therefore the Book of Nature, when read in light of the Book of Revelation, shows us that creation is patterned off of Christ the King and our Queen Mary. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, Venmo me money so that I could buy Twisted Tea. I'm Twisted Tea's top guy. Follow at Catholic Duong on Twitter. Thank you guys so much and pray the rosary today.